Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our senior college class on the different cultures of UMFK students. You know, by now, I, you know, some of us are, maybe all of us are all familiar with the town of Fort Kent. And there's a real diversity in town. Um, whether it's, uh, you know, the French, the Canadians, uh, the English, uh, but there's a real diversity. But one of the places that adds even more diversity is the university. The University of Maine at Fort Kent has students from so many countries. And so tonight we have two of the students and uh, Dave, uh, Dave Hobbins has been working with them to, um, to uh, give, give us a presentation. So uh, Dave, uh, with that as an introduction, if you would, well, just to be clear, though, I didn't do anything <laughs> but uh, email, and these two gentlemen agreed to present to us. So, gentlemen, we are so appreciative of you being here, believe me. <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do is I'll introduce Nicholas, and after he's finished, uh, Vaughn, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll introduce you both now, but then we'll call on you, Vaughn, uh, at about half past. Uh, so, anyway, Nicholas Cortez, uh, bienvenido. Uh, we want to thank you uh, for presenting. Um, uh, please forgive me if I mispronounce your hometown, uh, Mane Chalas. Yes, Mane Chalas. Yep. Mane Chalas, Colombia. Uh, Nicholas is a first year student business major at UMFK, and he's a member of the men's soccer team. Nicholas, we are very appreciative of you being here, and we're loving, waiting, can't wait to hear about Colombia. So thank you. Perfect. Uh, good evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be with you all. And uh, well, I hope uh, to present a little bit of my country tonight uh, to you. So uh, I'm going to do a 20 or 30 minute presentation about uh, music, food, regions and uh, more topics that I have to share with you. So uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so you can start watching what I have for you. And okay, so this is my country, Colombia. I, I am 20 years old. I born in 2000. I uh, was born in 2000 in Manizales. And uh, well, this is our flag, first of all, uh, blue, uh, yellow, blue, and red. Uh, they have different meanings. Uh, the yellow symbolizes the natural riches of the country. Um, the blue signifies liberty. And the red symbolizes the bloodshed in the war for independence. Um, we were a Spanish colony and we gained independence in, uh, 19, in 1810. Uh, so we have a great Spanish heritage as well as Catholic. Uh, we were greatly influenced by them until uh, the 19th century. So let me... Yeah. Okay. So ne next, let me search something for it. Okay. So before getting it started, it's important to remember that it's Colombia, not Colombia. Uh, sometimes people uh, mis mispronounce our name because in the United States, there are many, there, there's a brand called Columbia and there's a university called Columbia University. So people tend to uh, associate that name with, with my country, but it's Colombia with, with an O. So quick facts about my country. Uh, we are 50 million people, uh, according to the latest report. Uh, the biggest city is Bogota, with 11 million inhabitants. Uh, it's a large, large city. You know, a lot of traffic jams, uh, a lot of diversity too in the city is huge. Uh, our government is really similar to the American government. We are a democratic presidential republic. We have elections every four years, and we, are, we have a Senate and a Congress. So uh, we are pretty similar to United States in that aspect. Uh, our official language is Spanish. Uh, we have many different uh, indigenous uh, languages too, but the main languages spoken is Spanish. Uh, more than 94% of the people can read and write. Uh, that says a lot about our education. We are a little, uh, there's a really good education in Colombia. A lot of people know how to read and write. Uh, we are in the 21st century and I think that's one of the most important things nowadays. 
uh, our religion. So we are mainly Catholics. We are mainly Roman Catholics with uh, about 79%. And the rest is mainly Protestants. We, we have very little Muslim uh, population. We, we do have because immigrants from Asia came, but it's, it's minor. I would say less than 1%. So our main religion is Roman Catholic. And our national day is the 20th of July. It's called the Independence Day. And that day symbolizes um, the day that we gain independence from Spain in 1810. So any questions until now about this uh, starting facts? Okay, so I'll proceed. So next, uh, our location, we are located in the in South America. Uh, as, as you can see, here is Florida. Here is United States. We are really close to United States. Uh, a flight Bogota, Miami is about three hours, so we are really close. Uh, this is Mexico here, and this is Central America. Actually, we are united in Panama here. And you can see the, 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 the green figure is Colombia. We have uh, the South Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean Sea. We are the only country in South America that possesses both coasts. And that's a really huge advantage in terms of uh, economic change and also tourism. Uh, we, we are very proud of having two coasts line in, in Colombia. We have more than 300 beaches uh, for, for tourism and for uh, as well as economic progress. Also, as you can see, we are really near the equator. As you can see, this is uh, the equator line more or less here. So that fact will lead us to, to the next uh, slide. So this is really interesting. Uh, you guys may, 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 may ask, how's the weather in Colombia? So we, we don't know what's the snow. We don't have seasons um, because we are really close to the equator. So in Colombia, there is no spring, there is no summer, there is no fall, and there is no winter. So as you can see in this graphic uh, in the left side, uh, the, the climate changes uh, depending on the altitude above the sea level. So also an, another important fact is that we use the metric system. So instead of uh, feet and miles, we use kilometers, meters, uh, kilograms. That's a big difference with the United States. But uh, as you can see, this is uh, zero meters above sea level. This is 1,000 meters above sea level, 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000. So as we go up, the, the weather is going to get colder. As you can see, this is the Celsius uh, temperature that I, I can do the, the translation right now to Fahrenheit. This would be uh, 80 to 85 Fahrenheit. Then we pass to temperate, it would be 60 to 80 more or less, then it would be in, in this cold, it would be 50 to 70 more or less, 50 to 60, and about 3000 meters is less than 50. It's never, it's never like four Kent, like minus one, minus two, minus three, that's <laughs> never gonna happen. <laughs> but um, this is really important to have into account. So we don't have seasons and the, the climate depends only in the altitude. Also, the, the, the animals that we can find uh, at the top of the mountain will be completely different as, as, uh, of the ones that we can have found uh, in the warm places, as well as the agriculture. So we have a lot of variety that we are going to see later because of the, of the thermal floors, of the altitude above sea level. Now, as we can, as we can see right now, this is the, this is the warm, this is the first uh, base of the mountain. This is, uh, I'm going to return the slide so you can see this is the warm uh, stage, zero meters to a thousand meters above sea level. So as we, as, as we can see, uh, Colombia has a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, beaches, really nice places, uh, a lot of tourism, uh, people from Canada, from United States, from Europe, from Asia, year round they go to Colombia to enjoy the, the, the nice weather. Now, uh, passing to a temperate um, area, we can find this is a typical Andean mountain. Uh, and these uh, trees that you can see are, are wax palms. 
This is the national tree of Colombia. It's wax palms, and they are the tallest palms in the world. Uh, this is one of our prides uh, because we are the only country that we have this uh, type of uh, palm. Uh, so it's a really important aspect in Colombia. Some can measure up uh, to 60 meters, and there are 14 species of wax palms. So this is our national plant or tree better. Now, this is the cold uh, stage of the mountain. This is the capital in the right. This is Bogota. It's located above 8,000 feet sea level. So if you guys, if you guys go there, you uh, would have a little bit trouble of breathing because there's less oxygen. Uh, but it's beautiful. As you can see, there's the mountains. Uh, we have skyscrapers. Um, and in the left, this is my city. This is Manizales. It's a beautiful place in the middle of the mountains. As you guys can see, uh, there's a volcano about, I would say, 150, 200 miles of the city that you can see from the city. And there's a snow, as you can see. So it's really high. It's almost 14,000 meters above sea level. So that's why we have snow here. That's the only place in Colombia you can find snow in the top, top mountains. Uh, so this is a beautiful image of my city that I wanted you guys to to see and to realize how how the how you can combine the the beautiful um, images of the nature with urban areas. Uh, this is the Paramo. This is uh, before arriving to actually where the snow is. Paramo is ha it, it hasn't uh, it hasn't has a. Uh, a translation to the English. It's, it's a Spanish word. This area is between the cold and the glaciers. Uh, it's typically 10,000 feet above sea level. Uh, you can find uh, this is called a frailejon. This is another typical pl plant from Colombia. And uh, well, at the end, we can find these are the these are four peaks that we have in, in Colombia: Nevado del Ruiz, Nevado del Tolima and Santa Isabel. Those are the names of the three glaciers that we have. So as you guys can see, there's snow only at the top when, when the altitude is above 14,000 feet above sea level. So now that, that we realize there's so many different climates, so many different uh, weathers in Colombia, it's all about diversity. We have six different regions with a huge cultural diversity. So as you guys can see in the right part of the, my presentation, we have the Caribbean coast. This is the closest part to the United States. It's in the north. Uh, also, this is the tip of South America up here. This is the northern most part of uh, South America. We go here to the Pacific coast. That is a coastline with the Pacific Ocean. Here we have Panama. This is another region of Colombia. It's important to note that every single region is completely different. Different accents, different food, different music, different types of, of people. Um, next, we have the Andes mountain range. We have three mountain ranges that crosses the country in this uh, region. We can have found the, the largest cities in, in the center of Colombia here. Uh, now at the, at the west part of Colombia, we have Venezuela, that is here, and the grassland plains then, that in Spanish we call Orinoquia. It's really similar to Maine, this part, uh, to Maine, let's say Maine in, in summer because it's really, it's really warm. But it's, it's really similar to Maine. There is not much um, mountains over there. It's just it's plain and it's beautiful, beautiful sunsets and it's uh, proper for agriculture. A lot of uh, agriculture in this region. Uh, and also different, different music, different people as we are going to see later. And finally, we have the Amazon rainforest. Brazil is here and Peru is at the other side. So this is a huge jungle. Uh, of course, it's really uh, it's not uh, populated uh, at all. Uh, I had the, I had the pleasure to travel to the tip of Colombia here in Leticia, where the frontier with Brazil and Peru is, uh, and I I went in boat through the Amazon River, 
We, we are going to see later a species that we can found uh, of pink dolphins in the Amazon River. It's beautiful. And it's a great experience. It was a great experience that, that I had in, in my life. So I'm going to share with you guys a three-minute video uh, of, of what I just explained about the regions and everything. So I hope you enjoy it. Colombia, a rising, diverse, and vibrant country with lively cities. Thanks to its well, geomancy. Video is not showing on my screen. Yeah. Oh, it's not. It's not showing. No, no we have your slide. Okay, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Oh, sorry, don't. Yeah. Okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Now, right? Yep. Perfect. Colombia, a rising, diverse, and vibrant country with lively cities. Thanks to its geological location, there are a wide range of ecosystems. Colombia has seven different climate zones. Starting in the vast Andean region, with altitudes reaching 20,000 feet, its coffee-growing region, where the smoothest coffee in the world is harvested, down to the dense jungles of the Amazon and the Orinaquia region, the extensive coasts in the Caribbean and Pacific Oceans, to the far-reaching eastern plains. Colombia is known for its valleys, moorlands, warm water beaches, caves, deserts, canyons, jungles, and rivers that change colors. Which country has the greatest diversity of flowers in the world? Colombia. What about orchards and palms and exotic birds? and frogs. Colombia, which country has the largest diversity of fruits per square foot, where you can try a different fruit every single day for an entire year? That's right, Colombia. Our country is home to 10% of the entire planet's wildlife. Colombia is also its people. Our talent has allowed us to achieve great goals. A Nobel Prize in literature, one of the most acclaimed cultural contemporary artists. Entrepreneurs, researchers, artists, and athletes have shown the rest of the world that in the land of magical realism, we are capable of making dreams a reality when others thought it was impossible. Colombia's cultural mix comes from indigenous Spanish and African backgrounds, and it has shaped our rich traditions with an assortment of flavors, rhythms, colors, and destinations that make unique magical experiences for millions of tourists from around the world. In the country of magical realism, joy runs in our veins with spirited rhythms like badinato, cumbia, oro, champeta, bambuco, guapina, salsa, or horropo, which are present in every traditional Colombian celebration throughout the year. An economy growing faster than the regional average, where 48 million people are determined to take the country to the next level. Colombia has attracted investors from around the world due to its business-friendly environment. It is a strong and steady nation, as well as a welcoming and joyful country. Colombia has gained international recognition with its products and services. If we could only see the world through Colombian products, every morning in Asia, they would be having breakfast with the smoothest coffee in the world. In Europe, they would be enjoying our exotic fruits. And in America, every important ceremony would be adorned with our wide variety of flowers. Come and soak up the sun, enjoy the cold, travel, and celebrate with us. Here we smile as if joy could be exported. Here you are greeted as if being friendly were law, and enjoy doing it as if it were our duty. Here there are vibrant and caring people who believe in reconciliation and integration as acts of hope and progress. On behalf of my country, I invite you to experience it with the hope that you will become one of our millions of ambassadors of magical realism and showcase to the world the best of Colombia. So that's a little bit more in depth of what I talk about. As you guys could see, um, there's a lot of diversity. Oh, sorry. There's a lot of diversity in Colombia. I mean, as you guys could see, a lot of races, a lot of colors, music, uh, different kinds of uh, weather, uh, mountains, valleys. So we are, 
pretty diverse. Uh, like if you guys like the mountains, you have your your place. If you prefer warm places, you have your place. So, as the video said, Colombia is the second most biodiverse country in the world, ranking first in bird species. Uh, this is a pink dolphin that I was talking to you guys about. Uh, this can be found in the Amazon River. It's, it's a friendly animal. I, I saw them and they're really, really friendly. Uh, these are kinds of parrots that we have. They're really beautiful. Uh, sadly, some people use them for uh, illegal trafficking because uh, these, these species are really exotic. And well, it's, it's, it's hard to preserve them. Uh, and down here we have the orchids that are our national uh, plant, as well as the wax palms, but they are also our national palm. We have a lot of variety. Uh, and it, yeah, it represents more than 10% of all the species of fauna and flora on earth. So we are pretty, pretty biodiverse. Now we, we, we pass to another nice topic of my country, that is the food. Uh, food is a really important aspect of our culture. Food uh, defines what a family is sometimes. Uh, I remember when I was little, sitting around the table, enjoying uh, typical meals with, with our family. So it's a really important part of, of our culture, the food. This is our most typical uh, plate that is called bandeja paisa. Uh, in English would be paisa tray. Paisa is how uh, a region in Colombia is called. And we can found beans here, uh, avocado. This is a plantain, a baked plantain. Uh, we have a type of chorizo here. We have a uh, fried egg, rice, uh, ground meat, arepa that I'm going to explain later what it is. And we have uh, pork here, it's pork loin. It's, uh, we call it chicharron but it's really crunchy. Uh, so this is a highly caloric meal. <laughs> it's huge. You can, you can, you can have uh, lunch with this and no dinner after because it's huge. Yeah. Uh, so this is the most important plate of, of, our, of our country. Next, we have the ajiaco. Uh, this, is a, this is a typical uh, plate from another region of Colombia, from Bogota specifically. Um, it's a soup but it's a really uh, special soup. Uh, it's a very popular dish in, in Bogota, as I said. And uh, this soup is made with chicken, three kinds of potatoes, corn, and a special herb called guascas. This herb gives the soup a wonderful flavor. It's delicious. Uh, it's, it's similar to parsley, but has a, has a smooth flavor. So it gives the soup a really nice flavor. Uh, you can have it with avocado as well. Um, some, if, if you guys go to Shop and Save or, or to John Scherfen here in Fort Kent, some of the avocados that you're going to buy probably come from Colombia. We uh, export a lot of Hass avocados. And in Colombia, you can buy 10 avocados for less than 50 cents. So if you can, if there's a lot of uh, avocados there. Next, we have empanadas. This is a kind of a snack, more after between the lunch and the dinner. Uh, they are served in, the, in most uh, Colombian restaurants here in the United States. Uh, this is an important fact. Uh, there's a lot of Colombians living here, mainly in Miami, in New Jersey, New York, and California. There is probably more than a million Colombians living in, in the United States. So there's a lot of uh, restaurants in the United States and they serve uh, empanadas. It's one important dish. It's uh, stuffed corn and the corn is deep fried in oil. Uh, you can stuff it with uh, pork, uh, chicken or ground meat. Here is uh, a salsa. It's uh, a pico de gallo. Probably you guys, if you eat Mexican, you know what a pico de gallo is. It's a mix between tomato, onion and parsley. Uh, next, we have the arepas. Uh, I would say it's a cheese stuffed corn cake. Uh, it's, 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 for me, it's delicious. You can have it on the, on the breakfast. Uh, 
It's really typical also from the Paisa region, and it's a really healthy meal because it's corn and it's not, it's, it's not fried. So it's a really good carbohydrate to start the day. Uh, it's uh, typical and really healthy. So now we pass to another important topic of Colombia, that is the music. Uh, I would say no trip to Colombia is complete without hearing some of the country's most celebrated music. Uh, so let's dive into some of the most traditional musical genres. First, we have the cumbia. Uh, cumbia is a well-known uh, genre in Colombia. It was originated in the Caribbean coast, where indigenous Colombians and African slaves and Spanish, uh, and Spanish colonialists mixed. So this uh, musical uh, tradition started from a cultural mix. It was a huge mix when the Spaniards arrived, there were African slaves and indigenous people that uh, formed this musical journey. So I'm going to play probably 30 seconds so you guys can uh, listen to it and, uh, and watch how you, how you dance it. Let me share again here. see it's a really uh the dance is uh really uh, interesting it's really typical from colombia uh the new generations we don't dance it that much but it's uh really traditional uh next we have vallenato uh that means from the valley it comes from the northern coast of colombia uh specifically the valley between the mountains of sierra nevada santa marta and serrania del perija that are regions near venezuela uh, it has roots in Spanish and West African rhythms, uh, and its signature accordion sound comes from Europe. So this uh, instrument here is an, is an accordion. Uh, it's the main instrument in Vallenato, uh, and it's, typical, uh, it's a typical musical journey from the Caribbean coast. As I told you guys, uh, music and food and everything is different depending on the coast. I'm going to skip it because we are running uh, out of time. Uh, next is salsa. Uh, that is uh, is originated in New Jersey, actually. Then went to Cuba, Puerto Rico, and finally arrived uh, in Colombia. Uh, this 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 kind of uh, musical uh, style was improved in Colombia. Uh, how you dance it and how you sing it. Uh, Colombia has witnessed both worlds of salsa. So there's a, there are two types of salsa. Uh, the salsa brava, that is uh, heavy bass lines, powerful pianos, percussion, brass, and dancing. And the other kind of salsa is romantic salsa, uh, which focuses more on the voice of the singer and is softer. Uh, this is a really nice uh, musical uh, style to dance. Well, uh, Getting, I'm not finished yet, but I'm going to be quick on this one. Uh, sports. So we have two main sports in Colombia. Road cycling. Uh, as you can see, we had the Tour de France winner in 2019 in Egan Bernal. I love cycling personally. He won the most important race in the world. And soccer. Soccer is really important in Colombia. Uh, we have been to the World Cup several years and we have great players. Uh, this is uh, this here is from Pablo Montoya. He's a NASCAR and Indy car driver. So I, I put him because uh, I know NASCAR is really big here in the United States, and and I, I know probably you guys have have watched NASCAR sometimes. So he he's a NASCAR and Indy Indy car driver. Next we have tennis. 
uh, we have these 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 two guys were Wimbledon winners uh, in la last year, and finally we have Katerini Warwin that is a triple jumper, uh, has won Olympic medal in in the Olympics, uh, and it's important to know that we have great sportsmen, uh, we have great 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 uh, talent in Colombia, that sometimes there is a lot of lack of opportunities there. Uh, sports is not as developed as here, but well, we are trying to progress. Uh, notable people. I don't know if you, if any of you guys have read uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and 100 Years of Solitude. Uh, he won the Nobel Prize with that, uh, with that book, 100 Years of Solitude. And uh, I, he, he also said this nice sentence, what matters in life is not what happens to you, but what you remember and how you remember it. He's probably one of the most important Colombian uh, persons that ever lived. Uh, we have notable people uh, here. Uh, I, I put Shakira here, that is a pop singer, pretty popular. Uh, and I wanted to put Sofia Vergara here because she's uh, the star of Modern Family. I don't know if, if any of you is familiar with that show, but she's the star. Uh, we have Manuel Patarroyo here that developed the vaccine against malaria. Now that we are in the COVID ages and talking about vaccines, this uh, Colombian scientific was uh, in charge of developing the vaccine against malaria. And uh, in the top right corner, we found uh, Fernando Otero that is one of the most important artists in uh, the 20th century. So as you guys can see, we have a lot of talent. We have scientists, we have musicians, artists that make uh, our name internationally higher. And finally, I want to thank you for the time and to say to you that Colombia is much more than drug cartels, than the bad fame we had in the 80s, that much more than Pablo Escobar and violence. We had tough times in the 80s, in the 70s, in the 90s. Uh, we reached a uh, peace agreement with a guerrilla last decade, and violence is being de-escalating a lot. It's a really safe place for me now. And well, I'm just trying to to make uh, my country uh, to to show you guys the the good side of my country. And well, I'm I'm really proud of and, and happy to be able to share a little bit with you. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, Nicola, if you uh, let me, uh, if anybody would, wants to ask questions right now, I would I would encourage it for at least a few sure. minutes. Um, sure. And just unmute yourself, and then um, and then ask the question. And uh, and let me start, Nicola. I'm I'm totally impressed with your presentation. It's um, you know your country very well from the economics to, to the culture, to uh, certainly tourism. And um, you did a terrific job. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. Does anybody, any, if anybody has any questions, now is, now is your time. Um, you can, uh, all you gotta do is unmute yourself and- um, I have a question, Don. Uh, Nicholas, uh, could you show us the map again of Colombia and, and show us where sure. Manizales is? Sure, uh, let me, I'm gonna share a screen again. This is uh, the Caribbean, the, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, the Caribbean is here, the Pacific is here. And uh, here is the capital, Bogota, and here is Manizales. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a distance of probably 120 miles, but, a, yeah, a tripping car is about seven to eight hours. And you guys may be wondering why. Because we have to cross a lot of mountain ranges. So it's a lot of curves going up and down, up and down. Uh, and if you guys, any of you guys have been to San Francisco sometime? Mm -hmm. So it's, I, I think San Francisco is really similar to Manizales because there's a lot of hills. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, here is... Uh, kind of pictures of, of Manizales, you guys can see there's a lot of mountains and there's a lot of, it's, it's really hard to drive there. I'm, I'm telling you guys, it's really hard to drive. 
especially if you have a manual car. <laughs> the clutch suffers a lot. Uh, but but this is Manizales, uh, and yeah, this is just some some pictures that I had, and it's in the center of the country. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. Any when are you questions? organizing a tour for us? <laughs> sure. Well, I'll, I'll, be happy. I'll, I'll be happy. I actually, I so I am. I am going with my girlfriend uh, next next month. Uh, she's from she's from here, and well, she's excited to to know Colombia a little bit more. Oh, okay. Uh, we are gonna. We are. We, it's not gonna be the same because of COVID, but I'm going to try to show her everything about the culture the food, uh, the music, and to expand a little bit more the vision about life, uh, about everything that you can find out there. And yeah, I'm, I'll be happy to keep you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have one more question. You, you said that you went down the Amazon rainforest and you saw the dolphins. Yeah. So what kind of a trip? Was that a, a expedition or? Uh, my my grandparents uh, gave me that trip, so I, I went with them because my grandfather is a, is a nature lover. Mm -hmm. So uh, we stayed in in the capital of let's say the state of Amazonas. Mm -hmm. Let's say yeah, was the capital. So it's like a it's a city of maybe thirty thousand people, and uh, we went to several indigenous cultures. We watched big snakes. Because we are in the jungle, we <laughs> yeah. we walked through the jungle, and and the best part of the of the travel for me was navigating on the on the Amazon. That is a huge river, huge river, yeah. has has like three or four miles of of width. It's huge, mm -hmm. and it was amazing. It was an amazing trip. Okay. Sounds very interesting. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're muted, Don. Uh, I uh, I was wondering if you have done this presentation for anyone else, or if you have plans to do so. Uh, no, I, I build this presentation only for 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 you guys. Uh, I, I I took three or four days researching and and probably figuring out what was the the most important things to present in half an hour. Uh, I probably is not enough to show you a lot, but I, I try to to be really specific. And th this presentation was built only for for this this time. It was very well done, and I hope yeah. you get the chance to show it to some other people as well. Thank you very much. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Don, when you give me the go ahead, I'll introduce Vaughn. Sure. I mean, right now, if you want to do that, uh, um, that'd be great. Go ahead, Dave. One is all set. Okay, yeah. if I introduce you. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Kelly uh, comes to us via Texas, believe it or not, of late. Um, he was at the Ranger College and he transferred to UMFK. He's a junior business major at University of Maine at Fort Kent, and he's also on men's track and field. But his home is Kingston, Jamaica, and I'm also thrilled to learn about uh, Jamaica. So Vaughn, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. It's all yours. Um, Vaughn Kelly, um, I don't think I can top that presentation from Nico, though. <laughs> that was a really good presentation. I'm just... I'm just glad I got up. You guys hear me, right? Yes, we do. All right. You guys, you can slow me down if if you don't hear what I'm saying because my accent. Sometimes uh, people don't hear what I'm really saying because accent is really strong. But anyways, you're doing very um, well, Vaughn. I'm just glad I got this opportunity to present a bit about. There's so there's so much thing about Jamaica. I can't spend 29 or 30 minutes talking about it. So let's see what we get through tonight in this short time. All right, share my screen, right? Share that time. You see him? You see my nope, screen? No, we don't see it yet. You should, you should be able to, though. 
share. Zoom wants to share the screen. If you looked on it, yep, there he goes. All right. So first of all, this picture you see here is just, we Jamaicans, we like to come together. Like, we like to come together and, and basically make a party. So this is just a picture of that. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry. Jamaica was was discovered by Christopher Columbus in in 19, 1492. Name, as you can see here, X X I'm, I'm a, X Maka, as the pronounce, which means the land of food and water. But Christopher Columbus wasn't the first to actually be there because he was the first educated to find it. He, they credit him with the discovery. Actually, the Tainos, Arawak Tainos, who came from South, South Africa, South America, I'm sorry, where, where Nicholas is from, they came there 250 years ago. So they were the first inhabitants of the, the, of the island. The, after Columbus came, they colonized the island, which they, they colonized the people and forced them into slavery. Um, then in the 16th century, the, Brit the British came. The British came and had a war with, with the Spanish because the Spanish first colonized the island, then the British came and had a war back with the with the they had a war with the um, Spanish. They, they eventually won that war in 1660. So they forced the Spanish out 1660. As, I, as I'm gonna talk about later, there, there's still Spanish influences in Jamaica, but we don't speak any Spanish at all. And during the war, this is a very important thing. During the war of the British and the Spanish, I'm sorry about that. During the war between Spanish, the slaves that were brought to the island, some of them escaped and went to the mountains in the island. And those slaves were later called the Maroons of the island. So I'll show you some of those Maroons. So the, the country is built on the backbone of these Maroons, these Maroon people. Right, this is a picture of Jamaica in the in the 1800s, you see horse and thing. I can't imagine living there. Modern history. After the British colonized Ireland, Jamaica finally gained independence from the British in 1962. We are the, the first English speaking Caribbean island to do so. Hmm. Sir Alexander Bustamante was the first prime minister He's, not, he's also a national hero. We'll get into that later. We're <laughs> in the 19, we had our first elect, general election in 1962. We, Jamaica, we are a constitutional monarchy, which means we still, has the, we still have the queen have, as head of, head of state. She's represented by someone called the governor general. So really the governor general is just there to oversee for the queen. So we have prime ministers and we have ministers of parliament. So that's our, so we have a, we are a constitutional monarchy. Kingston was renamed the capital in 1872. It replaced Spanish town. As I, as I told you before, the Spanish was there first, then the British came and take over. And as I, as I said before, there are still Spanish influences in the town. Some just quick facts about, I'll skip over this part and go to here. Jamaica, we have 14 parishes. I don't, you can't see this, but we have three counties. This, this, will, this will be called Middlesex. These are these counties, all these parishes right here, this line. This is Cornwall and this is Surrey. These names come from the English. As you, can, as you can hear, Cornwall, Middlesex, I can bet there are places in England that has those names. 
because these names came from the English. But we have 14 parishes in Jamaica. We have Hanover, Westmoreland, St. James. As I can say, these all came from the British. St. James, St. Elizabeth, Trelawney, Manchester, Clarendon, St. Anne, St. Catherine, St. Mary, St. Kingston and St. Andrew, Portland, and St. Thomas. All of these parishes have a capital, which we see here, these little blue things. These are the capital of the parishes. Interesting fact though, Kingston and St. Andrew, they're in, they, it, they're, in, they're in one parish, but it's split in two. So geographically, it's one place, but there's like, you know, like you, United States and Canada have shared the same land space, but have a border between them. So it's like that for Kingston and St. Andrew. Jamaica has approximately about 3 million people living on island. However, you see this little, this little parish here, approximately 1 million people lives here, wow. just in Kingston and St. Andrew. It's the, currently, it's the only city that Jamaica has. The, another developing city is here in St. James, Montego Bay, where we, we, we have our second international airport. Kingston, we have our first, which is named Norman Miley International Airport. And then in St. James, Montego Bay, I'm sure most of you guys have heard about Montego Bay. It's, we have our second airport, which is the Sir Donald Sangster Airport. So this, this is a de developing city. And this is the, the, the city. All of these parishes, as we Jamaicans will call it, their country, like countryside, like, you know, like Texas, somewhere in Texas. Yeah, countryside. But move on. This leads me to the location of Jamaica. Yeah. <laughs> Jamaica is the third, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we're the third largest Caribbean island. And the, and the largest English-speaking Caribbean island. As you can see, this is Cuba right here. And this is Hispaniola. Hispaniola is the name of the, the general mass of this land, but Hispaniola is split in two countries, Haiti on this side, and Dominican Republic on that side. So, and this is the Bahamas Islands. And this is Florida right here, you guys can see. So we're like, if you take a plane from Monte, which Montego Bay Airport to Florida, it'd be like 50 minutes. It's really close to the United States. So that's just a geographical location of where Jamaica is. All right. So we move to the, the national symbols. This is our national bird, the hummingbird. These, these are not indigenous to Jamaica, but these specific ones, we, we, we call them a national bird because as you can see, the colors of it, the greenish yellow, the black, and these are all colors that represent our national flag, which by in fact, our national flag, as you can see in the first slide, I can bring it back here, black, green, and gold are yellow. It's the only national flag in the world that doesn't contain red, blue, mm -hmm. or yellow. Nice. Yeah, it's the only one. And this is a national flower. This is actually called the lignum vitae flower. So in Jamaica, we have a lot of um, folklores. So folklore, like nation, like healers, you know, like I don't know how to explain, but people that use herbs to heal sickness, not medi not medicine. So this is continued. This is considered to have healing properties for like headaches and and uh, belly aches, just regular um type of illness. This is a national tree, the blue maho. It's it's not it's not regular, it's not found uh, all over the country. But where it's found, it's 
like preserve the the government preserve it so and with, with the blue maho you will see like a lot of butterflies around it it gives off a, a, a aroma like a sweet aroma like you can actually smell the the, the 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 flowers that's on the tree as you can see it's a tree but it's like flowers coming out of the tree so it's a really unique tree and these as i can say these are national symbols as i went over the this are, this is the i don't know if you can see it good this is the 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 um the lignum vitae the flower and this is the the blue maho tree this is a national fruit, aki. Aki is a national, actually, aki is a fruit, but you can't just eat it like a fruit. It's a kind of fruit that you have to, and we, we'll see later in our, in our food, it's a kind of fruit that you have to boil and prepare properly because if not, you, you, will, be get, you will get very sick and probably die, to be honest. So it's something that if you don't know, if you don't know somebody Jamaican, just try to learn before because it, it can cause death if you don't prepare it properly. This is our coat of arms, which I told you, the heavily influenced by the British. Um, you, you, can, you guys can't see, but our motto is here, out of many one people. That means we have, in Jamaica, we have 92% blacks, so black is the the, the um the, the the mass of the people. However, we have a very diverse other eight percent is very diverse in Western Europeans, Chinese, um, South Americans. So you will see you will see a white guy sounding Jamaican and you like what? Yeah, so we have white people actually, second, third generation Jamaicans. And this is, as I said, the Jamaican flag, the bird. And this lead me to the national heroes. National heroes, Nani F. the Maroon. As I said, Nani was one of those people that when the Spanish and the, and the British fought for the island, she was one of the people that escaped to the mountains. So she, that's hence her name, Nani of the Maroon. So she, her name was Nani. But yeah, Sir Alexander Bustamante, he was the first prime minister of the country. Paul Bogle, Paul Bogle was the leader of the St. Thomas Rebellion against the British. He was the, the person that fought for the abolish, abolishment of slavery in Jamaica. So he's, very, he's a very important person in our history. Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey, uh, which I will talk about later. He was very influential in terms of not, not being very local to Jamaica, but one of the first internationally recognized persons to come out of Jamaica. George William Garden. I'm, I'm just going to, you see all of these people, Nani, Paul Bogo, Sam Sharp. All of these people was like middle, poor middle class people. George William Garden was actually well off. So it's, it's kind of surprising that he fought against the plantation owners of the island. So he was one of them that, and he was, for his, for his battles against, the, against them, he was hanged. He was hanged in the, in the national square. So he's very important to us too. Sam Sharp, to be honest, there's not really much modern history or, or um, history about Sam Sharp, but he led a slave rebellion against the British. So NC is one of our national heroes. And, the, and there's Norman Manley. If, if you guys remember, one of the airports, one in Kingston is named after Norman Manley. And we have one law school in Jamaica. It's a Norman Manley Law School. So also, he was... He founded the People's National Party, the, the party that ran, ran against Sir Alexander Bustamante, Jamaica Labour Party. So these are, he was the founder of Jamaica Labour Party, Sir Alexander Bustamante, and Norman Mali founded the Jamaica People's National Party. So he hence, 
his, his hero status. The Maroons. The Maroons, they live in the mountains of Jamaica. So they live in the hilly interior part of Jamaica, in the valleys, in the mountains. And they live a different lifestyle. They speak a different language. And they just live different. The, the most famous Maroon town in Jamaica is called Aponcom Town. Aponcom Town, as you can see here, where everyone come together at a certain time of year to celebrate their when they escaped from slavery. So hence you see the celebration here. And an interesting fact, the Maroons are one of the first set of people to embrace women's empowerment. Like women was put in leadership roles. Women would have done what the men done just by the influence of Nani of the Maroon. She escaped from one of the plantations and later went back to the plantation to free slaves. And the, the slaves went with, went with Nani and then it all started this women empowerment movement with the, the Maroons. So they're, they're very unique people. Actually, my my great grandfather is a maroon, was a maroon. God bless his soul. He was a maroon. I had the even though I never went, I never went there or because the, it's hard to access. I never went there, but I had had the luxury of getting to know him and know what their their way of life was just by him ex telling stories and stuff about the maroons and what he did there and what happened there. So I think they're, they're quite very interesting people. And this, this is our money. These are our coins and these are our bills. These coins are no longer in use, these red coins. And this is a $1 coin, $5 coin, $10 coin and a $20 coin. This is no longer in this. This, is, this would have been an old $1 coin. As you can see, all our coins have national heroes. But except for, for two, three, because <clears throat> we, we ran out of, um, I think we ran out of, out of national heroes, so we start using prime ministers for our coins and bills. So I'm start, I will start with the $50 bill. Sam Sharp is on the $50 bill. And the $100 bill, this is Daniel Sangster. One of the airport is named after him. He was a prime minister. He was and still is the only prime minister in Jamaica to be executed. Yeah. He was executed just four months in office. So I think that's why... They put him on the money. The five hundred dollars. This is Nanny of the Maroon. She's on. The, she's our only heroine. I'm sorry for for not stating that she was a heroine and not a hero. But yeah, she's our only heroine, and she's on the five hundred dollar bill. Our thousand dollar bill is Michael Manley. Michael Manley is the son of Norman Manley, the national hero. He was a prime minister also of Jamaica. And then you, Shira, was also a Prime Minister of Jamaica. He's on a $5,000 bill. So we have $1,000 bill, $5,000 bill, $500 bill, $100 bill, and $50 bill. Our music. We, Jamaica, we created our own music. We created dancehall. So... I just put a picture here. I just use the pictures as illustration to explain my topic. We created dancehall in the late 1960s with Bob Marley being the, 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 the lead way for that hero of music. But from dancehall arrived a younger, more hip 
type of musical dance hall. As you can see in the picture here, these people are all jammed up on each other and having and their younger people having a good time. So that that's the concept of dance hall music. It's a more electronic, um, hip vibe type of music. But reggae is a more type of laid back, um, older people kind of music. So I have a a quick video here just to illustrate just to illustrate what is um what a dance hall like event will look like if you if you never seen one. Yeah, that's just what a typical a typical dance hall session will look like. These sessions normally keep outside people just enjoying the music. It's just basically young people. It's like a young, it's like that it's like hip hop to like country music or something like that. Like young <clears throat> and to our sports. We we take a lot of pride in our sports, especially track and field. Track and field is our number one sport in Jamaica. As you can see here, this is Usain St. Leo Bolt. Usain Bolt. And I don't know if you guys recognize this person. This person is actually Asafa Powell. Before Usain Bolt, he was the actual world record holder for five years before Usain Bolt got the world record. And these are some of our um, women athletes. This is Shelly Ann Fraser. They call her the pocket rocket. She has won two Olympic gold medals and um, four um, world championship medals, three gold and one silver. This is Veronica Campbell-Brown. She was actually one of our first women dominant sprinters. Ewan Blake, the fourth fastest, fourth fastest man in history, Ewan Blake. Nikhil Ashmead and Elaine Thompson, Alia Smith. So these are just, these are our pride, like, these are our pride people. Soccer is, an ex, is a big um, thing in Jamaica, but we haven't qualified for the, the World Cup since 1998. And it, it was the only time that we ever qualified for the World Cup. So <clears throat> we need to do a lot better with that. And then cricket. I put a picture of Chris Gale here because he's actually the leading person. If anyone would say, who can you recognize who can you recognize for Jamaica in cricket? Chris Gale. Chris Gale is actually one of the biggest sporting brands that came out of Jamaica in terms of for cricket. I know most Americans don't know what cricket is. Let me ask. Do you guys know what cricket is? Um, no, I'd have to say you're absolutely right. We don't know what cricket is. <laughs> yeah. I knew that. Um, cricket is, is basically not like baseball, <clears throat> but it, it's similar. So you can just picture baseball different and then probably you'll know what cricket is because I can't really explain it right now because it's, it's too technical. But it's very big in countries like South America, England, um, Pakistan, India. It's... It's India number one sport. So Australia, New Zealand, those Commonwealth countries, it's very popular. It's a very popular sport. And fun fact, 
actually the Caribbean islands, we don't actually have a individual cricket team that compete against, against na nations. We have a collective team called the West Indies. So players from all over the islands like Barbados, um, St. Lucia, Dominica, they all come together to form this one team. And they play against teams like England, India, Pakistan, Zimbabwe, all those countries. So that's the team. I know, on to our food. Our food is one of the most distinctive things about Jamaica. As I told you before, Aki, the thing that Aki is a national fruit, and it's also in our national dish. So Aki and saltfish is a national dish of Jamaica. Right here, just some fried, fried dumplings. So it's fried flour, basically. But Aki is, has to prepare properly. It, it has to take out a, um, there's a thing in it, a, a thing that's poisonous. You have to take that out and boil it before, before eating any at all. And saltfish, saltfish is just, saltfish is not from, we don't want saltfish in Jamaica, but it's a part of our national dish. This is jerk chicken. Okay. Yeah, I know you guys probably recognize jerk chicken. You can find this on any corner of them in Jamaica. There's all the jerk chicken pan, jerk chicken place. We eat jerk chicken like you guys eat McDonald's or Wendy's or any fast food. So this, this, this is just a fast food for us. Jerk chicken. You see it on any corner. And this is actually a jerk chicken like paste made from many different herbs and spices. When the, jerk, when the chicken is jerked, we um, just put, put that over it. All right. I didn't want to, um, I want to show you uh, what, because you know, in every country you have like, in every country, this is actually um, spelled, mis, misspelled. I'm sorry about that. This should be not chick, but chicken. But you know, in every country you have like the you have like rich people, poor people, um, different social economic situations of people in the country. So this dish would be a dish that is mainly prepared in poorer poorer homes. So this is chicken back. I don't know if you guys ever heard somebody eating the back of the chicken. Have you? No. No, it, it's reason why it it's very cheap. So yeah. the poorer people of the, the country will will well chick probably chicken would be like four dollars or five dollars a, a tray. This would be like fifty cents. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's very cheap. And these are just boiled dumplings like flour mixed with water and just boil it and you get these. So this is a very cheap and affordable food to prepare. I just wanted to point that out because I didn't want to come and explain all the nice foods and didn't give you a real taste of what some people actually eat in Jamaica, you know? And this is our famous curry chicken and white rice. This is influenced by our diversity, I told you before. This is a, this is a dish that we took from the Indians. When Indians came to Jamaica as indentured workers, we actually adapt this dish from them. So this is curry chicken, which is one of my personal favorites. And this now, Jamaican bobsled. <laughs> we in Jamaica, we don't, as Nico, as Nico said, we don't have seasons. We in the Caribbean don't have seasons. We have tropical climate. So it's the one temperature are there and about all year round. So we don't have snows. We don't have anything like that. The, the, the coldest Jamaica will get is probably 75, and that's it. Or 79. It doesn't get colder than that. So to see four guys from Jamaica pushing a bobsled on ice, that is very strange. So, so Jamaica is actually the first non-winter country 
to enter the Bob Bob the Winter Olympics with a bobsled team. And they did it in 1988. And they actually made a movie about that team. The movie is called Cool Runnings. Have anyone saw that movie? You know, yes, it's a great film. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you guys wanna want somebody. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's about this this team and what they did and their journey to get their journey to get there. So I like to tell people about this because I think it's very interesting that we actually competed in the winter um, Olympics and we don't have a drop of snow there or anything like that. So for our entertainment, as I told you before, we Jamaicans like to get together. We like to be as one people. So it's easy to unite Jamaica because it's a very small, it's relatively small, it's a small island. So it's easy to unite people. And this event, it's called the Girls and Boys Championships, which we Jamaicans call it champs. This is actually the single biggest high school check and field event in the world, which the stadium or national, it, which is held in our national stadium. Our national stadium holds to full cap capacity about 60,000 people. When, when, it, when the girl and boy championship is being held, regular Jamaicans only get about 30,000 tickets because 30,000 tickets has been sold months before to scouties, scouts from America, um, come to scout athletes, people from America, people in diaspora. So it's, it's a very interesting event. It's, it's actually an event that most people won't ever like think of. It, it's very even. It's an high school event that all of the country com, comes out. It's very publicized. It's highly marketed. The athletes, when they finish high school, get big contracts. So it's, it's, it's a very... It's a big deal there in Jamaica. As I told you, check and fields are a number one thing. So we, we, we produce the athletes from these, from this championship straight out of high school. And there, there are a lot, there, there's, there's actually a lot of tourism attraction that, that I could see here and talk about, but I just like the point is so this is the this is called the Blue Lagoon in Jamaica. Actually, this is very popular. Like many people go there just for the ambiance and the, the scenery. As you can see, these are small huts in, in the ocean and it's very beautiful there. I will highly recommend anyone to go there. It's it's nice. There's another picture of the blue lagoon from the sky. As you can see, it's a very nice place. This is actually one of our most, I'm sorry, this is actually one of our most um, popular tourist destinations. It's called Dun River, Dun's River Falls. We get a lot of tourists here every year, no matter what is going on. It's time, it's hurricane, no matter what is going on in Jamaica, people love coming to the Dunge River Falls because an interesting fact about Dunge River Falls, it actually has the sea right there where the river meets it. So when people go, when people go between the sea and river, it actually uh, think that it has healing properties because we in Jamaica, we, we like to um, believe in a lot of folklore. We believe in a lot of like mystery stories and, and ghost stories. And so there are a lot of folklore behind many different things in Jamaica. And this is the famous James Bond Beach. I don't know if none of you have heard about it. This is actually the place where, this was renamed the James Bond Beach after the series James Bond was written here. And the first movie was directed and filmed here at this beach in this location. So this was renamed the James Bond Beach for that purpose and actually people here is actually one of the few beaches in Jamaica that has 
black sun. Because we have very, we have white, pure sun in Jamaica. But here we have black sun here and it's, it's very beautiful and well recognized. So another um, tourist attraction, Mystic Mountains. It's actually in the mountains. So this is inspired by our bobsled team <clears throat> that went to the Winter Olympics. But we don't have snow. We put rails and we race them in the mountains. And this is just a, a, a tour from the mountains looking down on the, on the city. As you can see, the city here, a cruise ship, and people here enjoying the Mystic Mountain. All right. Some of the most influential people are some of the most well-recognized people to come over Jamaica. This is actually Bob Marley. He's actually the, the person that is credited to, to actually the, fo the, fro the forerunner for um, reggae music. He's actually one of the, his album was voted the best album by Rolling Stones magazine of the century. His album Exodus. So he's one of the one of the most loved personnel that have lived in Jamaica. Bob Marley. And then we have Usain Bolt, the current fastest man in history of track and field. Even though he's retired right now, he's he brings a lot of um attraction to Jamaica in terms of People want to see why we're so fast. People want to know what we're doing, you know? So this is actually, he's one of actually our most well-recognized and well-renowned people that lives in Jamaica. And as, as I said, Marcus Garvey before. Marcus Garvey is the first world-renowned person to, came of the, to come out of Jamaica. He's actually created to start the Universal Negro Improvement Association. He lived in the United States and he started that movement to, a, to free, at the time, you know, it was slavery and all that. So he started that movement to free um, the black people and he started to, to go back to Africa, to the motherland, which they came from. So he was one of, um, a, he was a great, person to come out of Jamaica. It's actually a scholar to come out of um, the island. This, I've actually reached to the end of um, the slide. Um, it was a pleasure presenting presenting to you guys about Jamaica. As I said, there is actually so much I could, could have talked about, but I just picked a few because if I sat here and talk about all of it, it'll be like three, four, five hours. So, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I skipped something earlier. I'm very, very, very sorry. A little facts about Jamaica, world's fastest man. I explained that to you. Actually, we have the most churches and bars per square mile in the world. So, if you walk, you can't walk half a mile and don't see like three, four churches and bars. So where's that? Where, where there's a church, there's a bar. Where there's a bar, there's a church. I don't know why, but that that's just how I came to and see it. So that's just that's very interesting to me. I it it was baffling to me. I was like, I don't know why this is, but. Jamaicans like to be like we have the most church in the world and then we have, we have the most bars too per square mile and religion I didn't talk about religion because I didn't talk about religion because Jamaica it's not really much to talk about we're just we're um we're mostly Christians Roman Catholic um, Pentecostals, most of the countries pre actually Pentecostal. So, with is and then there's just Rastafarian, which was started in Jamaica. And that Marcus Gavin was credited to start the movement of Rastafarianism, 
Rastafarianism in Jamaica. So we created our own religion and we created our own music. And we Jamaicans, sometimes people like to say, sometimes people like to say that we're kind of, we kind of talk like too much of ourselves, but it's just the national pride of the island. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Uh, do anyone have any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. Yes, I'm just curious. Um, I know that there, there has, has, have you ever tried to have a cricket match at uh, UMFK? Are there enough people there that would be interested in playing cricket? Uh, they, they did something, but you actually need a, a clay surface to play cricket on. I need a special type of ball, and I don't think there not there not enough people here that really knows about it to actually do it. But they tried something some while ago, but it was all right. I I spent some time in uh, in of all places Alabama, and there were we had a, a large group of people from from India and Pakistan that were working uh, there. And uh, on Sunday afternoons or Saturday afternoons, I can't remember now, but they would always be play. They would always have a cricket match going. And, yeah. And, uh, so I was just curious if uh, if anybody had ever tried it at UMFK. Okay, thank you. It was very interesting. Yes, sir. You're welcome. May yeah. I ask a question? Yes, sir. Um, are there any surviving Arawak? Yeah, they, they, they were extinct by, um, actually, they were extinct by the, the European diseases that the, Europe, the Europeans came, bring, brought with them to the um, island. And if I can follow with another question, I was curious if, um, are you seeing any um, sea level changes due to climate change in your country? Country over the past ten years. Wow. I'm not sure about how, how high, but it has risen to to where some of the beaches are actually non-existent right now. Wow. That were previously there, so. It has risen quite high. Wow. Well, thank you. This was really enjoyable. Yep. Yeah, Dave. Um, yeah, Yvonne and both. Um, uh, Nicholas. Nicholas, please. Um, we really want to thank you for, you know, taking the time, but it's more than the time, I guess. It's for you to show how proud you are of your country. And, and uh, we all are to some extent, but uh, it's pretty obvious. Um, what I found, especially with Vaughn, is that we in the United States think of ourselves as kind of a melting pot, you know, with a lot of different cultures. But it, it sounds like Jamaica has a lot more cultures, different cultures, and it was kind of founded on the same, kind of the same principle of lots of different people moving into a country and just about taking it over. Uh, as I was looking at your food, um, it's taken a flavor of just one country, your music, uh, everything is, it's, um, but it very much is a, a melting pot or a lot of different cultures coming together. I really want to thank you both. Um, if, if anybody has any questions, now's the time. Um, And, and Dave, I think we're, I know we're meeting again uh, next week for, um, or to start looking at next semester's curriculum. 
this was a very good class, you know, for, for all of us, you know, uh, you know, we tried to expose or bring people, seniors to different areas, but this one here, the areas came to us and uh, I found it extremely interesting. I really wanted to thank you, uh, Nicholas and, and Vaughn, you did very well. Um, yeah. We'll have to talk to the You're registrar welcome. about giving you A's in your class. Hi, you're welcome. You're welcome. It was a pleasure to share a little bit my country with you. And um, anyway, thank you very much, and thank you everybody for being here tonight. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. All the best, guys. Take care. Yep. Thank, thank you. you. The same. Take care. Take care.